right there. These players still on your screen right here on stage battling to be the first team into the World Championship Final this year. SKT don't miss finals and they don't lose them when they get there. Royal seemingly collecting silvers constantly, at least Uzi himself, but has to win to get there at least. Now Royal fans will be emboldened by the fact that in Game 5 this entire series has gone blue side. They are blue side, but the deciding Game 5, they can ban Jace for a fifth time. And now it's on SKT, you can see Baker trying to get as much focus as possible. Right now, the spotlight's on the coaches, though, as picks and bans get started. Again, the Galio, Sejuani, Jarvin, all up in the air, circling around, waiting to be traded here. One final ban of the first phase for Royal Never Give Up, and I wonder, are we going to see something Tristana. extra new? Or do they go back to the old style, but with the extra information of what their opponents have played so far this series? Definitely using all of the clock. Draft could hinge on the ban here. Gragas once again banned on blue side. Both the victories pitch. for SKT was with the Gragas and Blank picking up one H to the jungle pool being pinched again. So the question is, do you ban away the Jarvan or Sejuani and, and make that a one for something else trade with the Galio on one side, the uncontested Sedge on the other? Or something similar. If you ban Tristana, you theoretically get Galio and X, or you're able to look for the jungle matchup, the support matchup. So far, RNG have looked past the Galio wherever possible. The Jarvan they took previously is available. Yeah, it, are they forcing a first pick jungle on the Jarvan? No, it goes to the Tristana. So Jarvan Galio is that the famous combo that SKT get in the decider? Jarvan Galio available. Zaya has been overlooked the entire time and Rakan banned out earlier. I think SKT stick with the Galio. You can hear the crowd. They were laughing about this pick in game four. No longer laughing. A bit bemused though in game five. To see it a fifth time in Faker's hands. It, it would be unreal to have Faker play five Galio games in a row if SK Telecom failed. I'm going to go further. It'd be unreal not to see Jarvan Cogmore locked in here. Try to turn the old Chinese technology against them. <laughs> it's the most obvious draft of they all time. They can, of course, play it later on with the Trist picked up. There's no rush there. So quickly, it's a new look once again. Seeing the same lane match of five times. Shahu now brings in the Corky and the rush to get Let Me a Protector in the Shen. And you hear the cheers go up from the Chinese crowd for Shao Bu's Corky. He can carry so well in the late game. It's not just about Uzi and we mentioned the spread of damage over this series yes the early game might not be as much pressure but RNG will definitely be packing it later so you don't take Cogmore here if you take Lulu you kind of prompt a Cogmore ban it's an obvious ban to take away they've prioritized the Lulu they could not get both and pair them with the Galio and Jarvan so now still the second phase super entry but if you have to start banning away carries from Bang, you don't get to pitch Booney's champion pool anymore. The Gnar, the Trundle, Cho'Gath, things that have been attacked quite a bit in the draft. He can get one of those big carries. And you're seeing SKT worried about aggro lanes, ban the other themselves. Wonder what this means for the jungle pool, for MLXG, because Lee Sin has been played one, once by him at Worlds. Massive pick for the side of RNG, and the jungle pool certainly has started dwindling. Swani banned a lot earlier. The Cogmore, like we expected, you see Lulu picked. Cogmore is almost certain to be banned with no rumble to try and take him down in team fights. Yeah, I doubt we'll be seeing a Nocturne again. No. Nope. We're talking about MLXG's jungle champion pool. Yeah, the Lee Sin or Rek'Sai or something are a bit more likely there. Oh, okay, I'm 100% sure we will wow. see the Nocturne again. <laughs> Nocturne actually comes through as the ban. That is a big shock to me, but it happened all the same. So RNG, what is the final ban? What are they most afraid of Twitch? It's removing hyper carries from Bang, saying, I dare you to find something that you can carry with. And now this is so interesting because a lot of the conventional AD carries are gone. You can go lower damage to an Ash, for example, if you wanted. Looks like they're going to pick their AD carry last, suggesting perhaps they will go very risky with their AD carry choice. And for a blind pick top lane, a trundle was the pick for them in recent weeks, but the Nar lane pressure worked for them largely in game four. Yeah, and he knows he's going into the Shen, so he knows that it won't be that difficult. You won't get that pressure from something like a Camille, from something like the Rumble lane. We'll see what it comes through. Final rotations now for World Never Give Up. Who's the last round of the draft? They need a jungler. They need a support. Tarek worked for them before they lock it in again. That was a win for them. That was the vain game. It's Tristana this time around. SKT, last pick their bot lane. The two says it's going to be Zaya. Let's discuss, though, that RNG don't have force on their lineup. This is a lot harder Tarek comp 
to pull off. The timing of the Cosmic Radiance with no engagement. Lee oh, wow. Sin. I mentioned the Lee Sin. It seemed likely when they held on to it, but a risky choice by r &D. Incredibly risky. We mentioned how difficult it is to play the team fights with the Terek. You're using it effectively. And as Papa said, not a lot of control here. Crowd control specifically from the RNG lineup. Whenever the Tarek come can choose when the fight happens, they choose their engage, they get the first target low, they choose the exact timing. A proactive Cosmic Radiance is one of the scariest abilities in the game, but they are very low on those proactive plays and reactively, we've seen so many teams trip up with the Tarek. I will say that there are a lot of tools around MLXG's Lee Sin to really enable this pick, even more so than usual though. A Shen Stan United could be on top of him when he goes in for an insect play to force that fight and he can reposition so quickly that the Tarek stun can be extended it does take a very high level of execution to actually pull that off but if done so correctly would be spectacular well, here we are into the decider bang on the Caitlyn a little bit of a new look for SK Telecom T1 I don't think a lot of teams saw this champion coming into worlds but the Chinese teams popularized it and won with it and Barely many other squads decided, you know what, you guys are right, this is a smart adaptation. SKT bringing, once again, a new look into this draft. And Lexi once again on Lee Sin, another champion that people weren't expecting to see much of, but push comes to shove. Backs against the wall now, match point for either side, do or die, all the references you want to make. It is this, the final competition for both these teams. One is going home, and one will move on to the finals. Here's game five. Uzi once again in this seat. Game number five on an elimination series. How will he perform under the pressure with the, the curse living over his head versus some of the most prolific and the most clutch players in all of League of Legends history on SK Telecom? And it's so surreal because you hear the calls of the crowd. They are desperate to see a Chinese team in the final for Uzi to actually get that big trophy. You hear the crowd cheer, remember. It's still another best of five after this. Being clutch here is so important for Uzi, but there will be an even further requirement for him in a week's time at the bird's nest in Beijing. So there's still so much to be done, and yet it feels like right now we have a final of its own. It's because right now is do or die, yep. as Freak so eloquently puts. Ah, all the references. There's plenty of, plenty of synonyms there. And no one's mind is anywhere but in this game right now. Samsung, WE, not names in their minds. It's all about Bang, Wolf, Faker, Peanut, Hootie, Let Me, MLXG, Xiaohu, Uzi, and Ming. These 10 players, the coach can no longer talk to them. The drafts no longer matter. Execution is all you need. And as minions spawn, RNG going to go for an invade, try to punish Huni's potential leash. And go back to their side afterwards. It will be a late start, though, for MLXG. He'll be a few seconds off. As you see, SKT stealing away the Raptors here, getting a bit of experience onto Bang. And particularly only gets one because of the yeah. patience range there. And he has to go to lane to get the melee minions. RNG actually went straight to lane, so it might be a level two advantage here in the bot lane. Uh, assuredly. I mean, RNG get to shove this early wave in and they get complete control down here. Shouldn't be difficult for Bang and Wolf to reset off of that tower bounce, though. Uh, with the Lulu and Caitlyn, they have very strong advantages here. Now, you talked about the the bands of support, uh, you know, the Leona specifically in champion select here, but Tarek and Tristana can also apply a tremendous amount of kill pressure. Ming, though, taking a lot of damage on the outside. Not a lot of ways out. He flashed, but it's going to be Peanut in range. He's going to get in there with the Ignite. The damage comes through. First blood for Bang. We said one of the only things that they would fear would be Rock's Peanut. Peanut comes down from the red buff to the bottom lane to secure first blood we for talk, SKT. We talked about taking away strategies as well. That's MLXGS. One buff into walking all the way down. That is not what you expect conventionally from a Korean jungler min-maxing. This is all about getting in the head of RNG. Has to make the entire trip, walks all the way down. They see RNG pushed up and Peanut smells his moment. So many things collaborate here to make this possible. SKT, they seemingly for free give away this minion wave push level one by going to the Raptors. Yet all the time coordinated with Peanut on this Darwin, a red buff start immediately to the bottom lane to take advantage of an over pushed lane. And it finds success here in game five, the critical moment. 
one of the few moments maybe there would have been a smiling peanut as he's been grimacing almost the entire summer season into Worlds. That was Vintage Gym. Didn't take an Elise pick, didn't take the Nidalee as banned away in the previous game. But a confidence booster is so important for the jungler of SKT. The first recalls come through in the mid lane. Faker, if he wants to, can TP right back in. Just adds the ability power for the wave clear. The speed is hard for him. He actually went for the, his own crust as well. Something not too often seen in early clears, but the hard farm out of the lead since so far. Level 3 for him. Matched by Peanut, though. He's also got himself a gank off, so... Massive props, of course, to the SKT jungles we're mentioning before. Let me doing his best to play defense up here. Is currently up in farm. Worth noting, he's doing very well for himself, but... Shen has been a big, big champion for him. His ultimates that were so good in that first game. Honey has had 1% jungle proximity. 1%. No visits at all. And some of the lane phases, most famously game one, have not gone his way. But he's got that thankless task. We've talked about it a couple of times. Push in, create pressure, even with two losing lanes at times, especially during Worlds, and don't die. And there's always going to be that pendulum swing. And he's largely done his job pretty respectably in this series. Meanwhile, opposing him, Let Me has diligently done his job on the tank. Sure. Shen, Maokai, and RNG have been able to really effectively actually use that Shen previously. Remember back to earlier in this series, the bottom lane focus where MLSG did go top. You know, he, he was able to lend some support to Let Me and get Shen to that level six where they could take advantage. But right now, it might be him that would be in need of some support. Fancy camera work there, though, and he's no longer around the mid lane. Currently down bottom, looking for a play off the control ward. Just feels like MLXG needs to make action happen wherever he goes. Late rotation jungler, the playmaker that he is famous on. If everything's left equal, I mean, pushing advantage for SKT. Top and bot lane, although it's pretty even right now as RNG have pushed up. And Galio situationally can clear faster than the Corky. So my eyes are really trained on what MLXG can do as well. That's his first Through aggressive this. move. Yeah, lands a slow couple autos, but Galio already on the way down. Faker not far. Doesn't have ulti, but still. Nice try to Huni lands the hyper damage and that will be a control ward cleared away. So now suddenly it's RNG losing vision on this side of the map. It's going to be so much of balance here in the early game about the globals of all of these solo laners. As we approach the level sixes for Faker, for Let Me, these cooldowns are tremendously long in the early game. And those are what you base your entire team strategy for that early game around. Jungle pass are determined by these. You know, trades in the top lane like we just saw could very well Mean let me joining on this bottom side gank. We or even, it failed. We didn't even mention it. Ming has ignite, so showing yep. a bit of transparency around playing around bot side. That's why you see MLXG once again returning here for the lane gank. But SKT pulling back very respectful. Yeah, no reason to go run headlong into them in front of a minion wave. So gonna play at range. I do want to point out though, despite the Caitlyn pick, and so many times in the worlds we see it be a super lane dominant pick. You knock the turret down. There's nary a lick of damage on the RNG bot lane turret right now. Uzi and Ming, maybe with the Ignite threat, who knows, have been able to keep the lane at equilibrium the whole time. So now I would definitely say that the respect is being played, paid to that Shen, uh, staying United post level six. But you're right, the kill pressure early on of an Ignite Taric uh, Tristana lane that we talked about, definitely keeping them honest. And pressure actually is a very ambiguous term that we use sure. often yep. as casters in League of Legends, but we could sim simplistically describe a couple of versions here. So. One version of pressure does come from kill pressure, and that is from assassins or from skill combinations like we just mentioned, where you can all in and kill the opposing champion. The other form of pressure that we talk about very often is the ability of a champion to clear out the minions in, in a much quicker fashion, which basically, again, gives that homework to the enemy, as you can see there, to have to clear out before going for one of those rounds. That's why Galio kind of has the best of both worlds, because he instantly clears a minion wave, leaves, and he even has a global to get somewhere faster than you can. So you're always under intense map pressure. Do you call missing every time he wave clears? He's got the wave clear from level one. So I take your point, Kobe. It is a very nuanced point. We talk about even the map pressure, the ability to push, being enough to create pressure on the enemy jungler because the laners can leave first. Seeing both laners on our laners, sorry, on our screen, leaving for now, trying to provide coverage. MLXG one camp away from six. Peanut, I believe, was seen coming down through the mid lane. Of course, the mini wave wasn't there, so he gets to walk, and now he is seen. He puts the red ward down and says, I'm not going to bother stealing this one. RNG know that information themselves, of course, as well. As the red buff will be grabbed pretty cleanly by MLXG. First level six is going to be that RNG jungler.
a pin that you expect not far behind. And then it comes to weird summoner spells. Like Ignite on Tarek is something that may never have been played in the entire summer season. It's not what you'd expect. And Exhaust, certainly, Heal has become common. He has the Wind Speaker, so you would have thought Heal. But Ignite basically says, wait, you've got a Lee Sin, and your support with a stun has Ignite. You're expecting bot lane pressure, and that probably means that after clearing a wave, Bang walks backwards because he's like, wait, surely the enemy jungler with this Ignite Tarek will play around bot side. If that means the turret lasts three, four, five minutes longer, just the summoner spell choice is enough to create pressure or implied pressure on the SKT pop. And the first recalls come through, of course, Bang before money gets to finish an entire ninja tabby, but it's actually still up in farm for Uzi, a pretty safe recall. So often you see a Caitlyn get to dictate when that happens, come in with BF sort of pickaxe, and it's the same attack damage out of this Vistana. And mid to late game, I think there is a, a massive power spike that comes out of the Triss, much more so than the Caitlyn gets. I mean, on a simple level, late game, it's one threat, and the one threat is Caitlyn on the side of SKT. A lot of the nerfs towards Caitlyn were about attack speed, base attack speed nerfs into meaning attack speed items give her less rewards. So when it comes to late game fights, Xiaohu on his famous Corky that won them a lot of their way towards their eventual second place runners up to that won him his MVP is gonna be so pivotal because there's a point where SKT may run out of damage. It's definitely true. You have to take into consideration the theoretical maximum damage output for a backline of Corky Triss, definitely higher. But top side, we actually have some action brewing. Okay, let me can get to the taunt. He's not gonna go for it. He's running out of health instead. So it's just MLX, she gives him a shield. They called that Jarvan and Galley were on the way. Suddenly this could be a three versus two. And Uni looking to go continually forward, wants to find the CC. Instead, they will find a load time with this turret though. Sweeper misses the ward, so he has the play. Flash only lands, here's the rest of the knockup, and they're gonna have all the CC they need. MLXG gonna drop 2 0 SKT. And Hooney, so much pressure on this top side. Now they even get to cut off Let Me from the minion wave, and Faker instantly teleports back to mid. Such a big play in the blink of an eye. The fact that there isn't a ward doesn't matter. They're gonna invest a teleport just to keep the turret health up. It's low, but it will not fall now. And Faker loses no minions in there. People question Hooney all year long, ever since he joined this SK Telecom version. He's stuck to his style of high pressure, playing forward on the map, drawing extra resources away. And as you talked about earlier, Papa Smithy, he only got 1% jungle pressure from his own team. It's doubled now! <laughs> I mean, he's kind of had a thankless task in summer. Spring season, he comes in. First game was Malka. He played a lot of Poppy. He looked great. He fit in. In summer season, halfway through the season, as we look over a bit of a replay here, his only wins were on Cassiopeia top, Lucian top, a bit of AD Cannon. He wasn't playing the meta champion. He can play the Nar. He showed it in his victory over Khan in the LSK final, the only game that SKT won. He does play to the beat of his own drum, and I love that SKT with no Antara have to embrace that, and all their strategies around a pressure top laner, something that Huni uniquely provides, and Antara does not. And one of my favorite stats is uh, the Huni style, of, regardless of champion, is effective. On Cho'Gath, the average, uh, you know, past halfway mark for uh, for 15 minutes for percentage is 30% of the time. They'll be across the halfway point. Hooney's Cho'Gath for percentage is 50%. <laughs> and Hooney has had to reinvent himself a bit here with Jace banned permanently. He hasn't played the Chonda once. You think about what a Huni champion looks like, you think, what about Cho'Gath, the big blind-picked mid laner of this tournament? It doesn't work for Huni because it doesn't have turret-killing pressure. You need to either gank Huni and allow SKT to make plays on the bot side, or Huni needs to be able to take down turrets while the enemy team reacts. Looks like the top lane should be falling on this one. No one's quite in range to stop him. Xiaohu was sent to handle the 1v1, but a little bit, you know, not enough time really had, and Huni will get the solo kill on first turret of the game. SKT up 2,000. Gonna walk over a trap here and reveal himself, so SKT know what's on the way. Damage on the Wolf, but it doesn't matter. MLXG so far ineffective on this Lee Sin pick. It's been Peanut. Been able to actually get a gank off on this, and now we got to fight into the mid lane. Let me puts on the dodge time, and you know, Shahu gonna find himself a duel against Moody, but he's gotta be careful. Peanut is around, a lot of burst damage. He's almost gonna take him one rocket, but the damage reduction Whoa. of Galio saves Hoonie's life. Single-digit HP means that Nara does not fall down. It was a lane swap by RNG to try to have the Corky answer Nar ranged auto attacker alike in the top side. Shannon mid lane. That would have been a big punishment of way back into the game for RNG. It does not happen.
Baker saves another teammate. Applying the damage reduction for the last rocket. Meanwhile, down bottom lane, yeah. Ocean Drake taking up. So a solo Ocean, 14 minutes not the ideal, but not bad. The fact that RNG's duo was able to heads up two on two with a bit of intervention, but not a true gank. Get the turret kill against the Caitlyn lane. No one gets first turret against the Caitlyn lane. RNG did, so the strengths on different sides. Uzi and Huni, the two major forces. And the turret health was high but they knew that all the members of SKT were topside. There was no backup for SKT while MLFC was bot side. They couldn't know that he was taking down the Ocean Drake. They had to respect, they backed away. It's nice to pick up the turret, answering turret for RNG. And you talk about the two points of power, Freak. Just a little fun fact here. Huni was at three HP three. from that last engagement. So three that hit points of power. That point of power, yeah, <laughs> was was three HP from falling over. He attacked one extra time with his coal, got three life on hit, lived through Shao Hu. And while the early game has gone good for SKT, they don't have the inevitability of mid to late game fight. Lulu Cogmore. It is Caitlyn this time. Caitlyn, after the big debut with WE with the Janna, Caitlyn Lane has not found any real success subsequent to that. Nard is going to go for a DPS build, but there's no guarantee that if this game stays around the two to 5,000 gold mark in 10, 15 minutes time, SKT can win team fights. Yeah, you definitely have to you know, run it through the team fight simulator here. Theoretical damage output of a Corky Tristana is amazing. However, there is higher disruption on SK Telecom's side. So if the front line can play well enough to disrupt the auto attacks and the damage output, then it could be similar. Here we go on the bottom side, though. Let me hit the target. Two puts in the dodge. He buys a lot of time, and here comes the rest of the squad. Wolf is here. The taunt to buy some time, but Peanut can walk away. SKT, three unanswered kills. That was really strong. Even through the dodge field, able to pick him up. They'll summon the Rift out, force uh, RNG to react bot side, and Baker's just leaving open, trying to wave clear around the mid lane. Baker feels like he's constantly trying to put out fires across the map, but Look there's at the number one there. Flash kick the end of a wall and all the rest of the damage is there. Huni, of course, the standard build doesn't have any resistances yet. And they knew their limits. MLXG hoping to get this first turret, but here comes Faker. They've got to walk away. No turret taken down. Faker keeps moving around. Second charge on the Rift Tarot. Difficult to return to a chunked out bot lane in a turret, so not necessarily going to be a big factor. Very nice execution on the top side. That was the second kill on Tahuni. That three HP hadn't have been there the previous time. <laughs> that would have definitely been a psychological blow to Tahuni, but giving up his life there and keeping up his summoners is decent. Two and a half thousand still the lead for SKT. He can still feel good about this one. The fact that he got first turret gold means he's still ahead of his opponent in lane. Uzi hoping to find something to do. Shahu forced to run away as well from Faker. And pressure in all these lanes. Something else that RNG really like to do with Shahu on, on this Corky is have him on the side lane and split pushing. So, you know, we'll get another look at Let Me here on Shen uh, as he gets dove, ending up being a three versus one. But it starts out with just Baker and Peanut doing most of the work. Then Wolf comes in, he adds the wild growth just for good measure. Hooney had half a rage boss. There was a chance if this wasn't instantly executed that he turns around, but the flash kick takes away any time to react. A single auto attack in the air without a flash may have been enough for the transform. Very nice punishment by Iron. I think he was actually in the middle, but I started hearing the sound, but as he leaped, the bounced off, he got the rage. You normally transform in a crunch as that goes in, and those few seconds, all they needed. Exactly, you, you consider one more auto attack connects because of the time to close from the Lee Sin. The transform probably happens, maybe there's a trade kill, but good investment of the flash picks up the proactive play for RNG. And again, the point we were talking about earlier, the difference between what you expect and what you got out of Caitlyn. Absolute value almost the same, but that's not how this game works right now. So Bang, working back from a deficit. The real trough comes at two items. I think right now should be up towards not too bad for Caitlyn. But from this point onwards, Uzi gets more and more and more, more powerful than Bang. And I love the fact that Kobe talked about the disruption factor for SKT because a perfect fight where RNG have the Cosmic Radiance going and then they free hit with it, they will probably win. And I think that will consistently be the trend. But there's so many different ways to force positioning, to bait out something like that big ultimate from Bing, where suddenly it doesn't matter how much damage you have if Let Me and MLXG die and there's no front line for the 280 carries for DPS behind. The execution here for the next five minutes are critical because as we see with the stack for Caitlyn, you know, she does drop off with the attack speed nerfs that you're talking about later, Freak. 
Um, and we've seen so many of the teams stall out with the pushing, but SKT are keeping up the pressure, trying to get that bottom secondary turret. Uh, I think he might have known that MLT had no flash, but still a flash to get away. Didn't want to get knocked up, but a quick dodge out by Let Me, but SKT able to get their third turret now of the game as bot lane tier two falls already. The only is getting top lane outer. Being able to run back, we've got a Lulu near him, put some damage on towards Uzi. And meanwhile, as we talked about before, the Trinity Force Corky, RNG love to have Shao Hu, Split Pushing, and now, once again, making quick work of this top turret, even though they sacrifice on the bottom side, and Let Me on Shen is unable to deal with the multiple members of SKT down there. RNG are trading some gold and trying to fuel their later game carry. And never lose sight of when the Baron is spawning against a ardent sensor turret, able to really reapply that on in an AoE and force down a fast Baron. So even on simple levels, you think conventionally, hey, you're gonna get a mountain Drake, you're jumping around the right side, you have the right side of control by controlling bot side for SKT. The Baron pressure of this ardent sensor turret at 20 minutes is immense. It, it truly is, because all of the champions on RNG also very successfully utilize that Ardent Sensor yeah. buff. Uh, this is, that's one of those times where the oh, Ardent Sensor, gold value of this item will actually be like 9,000 gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of the very best ones for what I'm actually glad RNG didn't go for this kind of composition. And we'll see if they can make that happen here. Of course, SKT though still with the lead from their early plays, but Leaking back some disadvantages in other spots as Peanut now to go for this Mountain Drake. Another moment where the Galio made us a comfortable one. He can just lazily walk over to the Baron and make sure nothing's going to happen there. To stop the setup, stop the control wards from being too advanced. So tanky that he's happy to face check away. RNG trying to keep that pressure on top side while sacrificing this dragon. They really want more gold. Gold to, full, to fuel these carries. And yes, they would love to have a Mountain Drake to really put more threat on a Taric Baron, but if they can get the items onto the Corky and Tristana, that's what they're looking to to try and really bridge this gap. Looks like the respect that Lulu better in duels right now than Tarek, which makes sense. Tarek much more of a team fighter, all area of effects around that champion. You saw that Bang is able to push Uzi away despite the momentary deficit. The fact that Uzi has a completed static shift, but no IE done for Bang. Certainly uh, a difference in what would be power in a fight. Thanks for able to control the lane, though. And not take too much damage. One of those things, though, where SKT have a lot of delay. Caitlyn wave clear with a shift. Galio. A lot of globals to bail them out if there's a proactive move. But the delay is not necessarily towards a better moment for SKT in team fights, And that's why RNG, they don't want to opt into this, but they have largely been a team to just have Uzi pushing out minion waves, hit three, four items, and then abuse how strong or embrace how strong their team fight has been. So for now, SKT happy with the pace of the game. See the continued push. As SKT now answering the mid lane and no one's gonna stop them. They got the rest of the team to go away. and. Now four to two in turrets. SKT pushing farther ahead. Three thousand now the lead. Cost of having Corky in the side lane. No teleport ward for him to be able to get in there. And obviously a Corky teleport yeah. situational at best. So doesn't mean they give away the free objective. And once now forced to go towards what tank stats he can, getting himself Knight's Vow, but. I mean, not a lot of durability, honestly. He can be cut down in a fight now, looking at the next shot towards the bank. Good damage up on here, Shahu getting him down, almost! The barrier of the wild growth both keep him alive. Two really big cooldowns there, and the pressure mounting for RNG as they collapse around mid lane. Will Peanut be left alone? He is, but he dodges a stun, it means he's able to walk away. That could have been a dive, if not for the quick fingers and the juke away. Still three to four in turrets, the lead is SKT, is two and a half thousand, but moments of pushing now for RNG. SKT are gonna have to show us something special here. So rarely do we get the feeling in these games where time is not working in their favor as RNG really starting to close the gap as they get closer and closer to that quirky Infinity Edge coming in as well. I think Bang forgot he didn't finish IE yet. He just got a zeal, which is more than the combined cost of what an Infinity Edge takes, which is like 1,200 change. Like, I think he just overlooked the fact that he's lowering his damage output, uh, which may come the hurt of a team fight, but we'll see. The DPS onto Xiaohu, has the movement speed here. Can only assume it's for extra attack speed for the uh, Arden Sensor, but given that low right value. value. <laughs> it's, it's literally I know, the right I know you are the oracle <laughs> for builds, but uh, hard to forget you don't have an Infinity Edge when your whole item, uh, six items is full. I, 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 
I, I do not see a way of explaining your way out of this he one He recalled it well. exactly 1,200 gold, no. and I think it's 1,225 to finish IE from this point. And he's like, I need the power spike now. We didn't want to yeah. sell the door That seems shield. more likely than forgetting. I would sell the door and shoot the hunter. Either the way, we Let's have no Let's move on. edge on Bay for any sort of fight that breaks out around this Baron. And with all of the outer turrets dropping, you know, RNG are moving in, taking the vision control, even with this mi middling gold lead here for SK Telecom, it feels like RNG feels so comfortable with the current state of the game. And there it is. Now the Corky has his Infinity Edge as well. Yeah. So it's two to none. We're at two, oh, two man. to one. Two Infinity, maybe beyond that right now. Zero for SKT. Let's see if they get anything out of this one. And I want to move our conversation a little bit since we are in a lull in the action. Not a lot of fights just yet. It's RNG going for vision control. I want to see what legacy these teams can leave for us. Uzi's been in two world finals. Sadly for him, he's lost in both of them. Faker's been in three. If RNG win this, Uzi gets to tie that mark at being in three finals himself. Maybe this will be the one that he wins, but you can kind of tell the tension is there. It's they're a bit more hesitant to pull the trigger knowing that one mistake is the last mistake you get to make for the year. And like the analyst talked about on the desk, until SK Telecom actually ever get knocked out of Worlds, yeah. you're not really going to believe that, that it's likely to happen. It's the, the mystique around this team with the consistency that they have performed with year after year have really built this up. It's the end of a chapter. If they lose here, they will be remembered, RNG, whatever the result of the final, as ending SKT's undefeated best of series streak at Worlds. And that already is the sort of thing of that adds to Uzi's legacy, but doesn't quite get him a title. And the statement always is, I'll believe Rome burned when I see the ashes. And right now there's smoke, but is there really fire? SKT still with the gold lead, and you can argue compositions, but execution is always what matters at the end of the day. And eight times now, that question's been asked to SKT, will you bow out? And every single time, they have won that game instead and gone further and further. There's a reason they have won three world titles in his clutch factor. A yep. factor that Uzi just simply has not shown yet in his career. And looking to go double digits in best of fives at Worlds, well, would be 10 and 0 in best of five series at Worlds ever since 2013, if they're able to take it here. Well, one to Uzi, Rocket jumps away and decided that he wasn't too afraid of Kaigo's anymore. Been away some vision again. Shao, who continues to be on the split push with this teleport. Just a double TP team plus Let Me's ultimate. SKT, of course, with a similar situation. They've got the Galio plus the double teleport. One of the little ways that you can feel like RNG is reclaiming control of this game is that Huni is never really pushing past the river on the Nar. He is basically pushing out a single minion wave that Shen pushed to him, and they're just trading farm between a Nar and Shen, which lets you know he's not confident enough to keep pushing down. They can't rotate him topside for now. They don't want him to lane against the Corky. So for now, the Nar pushing pressure on Shen isn't really a bullet point of this game because they're just trading farm between the two. In the meantime, though, SK Telecom still should be able to control the neutral objectives here. They push out the mid wave. Bang and Wolf are rotating over for another Drake. And luckily for them, Ocean Drake not the most benefits on this stage of the game. Sure. But they'll definitely take every little bit they can get. Thomas Smith, you mentioned trading farm before. To narrow in on that topic, you actually look at who's having gold leads on both these sides. Shahu and Uzi are actually the ones with gold leads over their respective counterparts of SKT. It's top jungle support with four gold on SKT, but they win in Redemption, no one cares that Wolf has 700 more. Lulu with a Crystal Embracer doesn't do anything different, so some of these spikes are really valuable, such as Rapid Fire Cannon being done on Uzi and not for Ben. On a simple level, RNG have killed more minions than SKT has, even though SKT have the pressure draft with the Galio Global, with the Nar who is pushing in. So the fact that RNG have got access to more minions than SKT lets you know that their ability to defend in the early to mid game, to stop the game from snowballing further after the first inner turret went down in the bottom lane, it's been a robust defense and they've rotated Xiaohu and Uzi around well and result is big item leads for them right now all right let's talk about how skt could craft themselves a beneficial team fight though because there are other items at play here with caitlin traps being able to close off jungle corridors and being able to create terrain with jarvin for who to use for a large dar ultimate yeah speaking of disruption they have these very big possible combos of jarvin galio and nar getting to that backline and stopping that TPS. Yes, 
you know, if free firing Corky and, and Tristana with Infinity Edges are, are left alone, then they, they can take this all. They attempt the flash, and Hoonie gets which way to go away. And that's not going to get the kick. Oh. Right here comes the package. This could be the fight that seals it all. Now they go into the front line. Hoonie transforms. But will he be knocked down? No. He's going to stay alive. 5v5 still available on both sides here. No one dies. More tools used by RNG. They teleported in. Couldn't find a fight with Hoonie can teleport back in, but he will be exhausted on the minion R. We all take a big gulp, and the game resets again. And they did have to use Hoonie's flash to get out. So that's one component that would make it easier to pull off that big AoE combo for the back line. As well, Bang on the case. His flash also expended. So have to worry about the positioning important here for the next fight. Definitely agree. Three summoners for three, though. The overall trade in this one, no ignite to reduce the healing out from Ming here. As, once again, RNG look to be playing for the warrior control, but SKT still has trinket wards inside the Baron pit, so nothing really stifled out just yet. The minimap not fully gray here as RNG push forward. Once again, get control of mid lane first. And even though it's by a different path, this game's RNG's draft with where they have the multiple damage deals in the late game and SKT only having one, still echoes what they did in game one, where they said, if we can take it late, we will win. Now trying to increase the pace of the game, though. First attempt at Baron. Well, SKT into the pit. The vision seen a little bit here as the workers on the wall. They know it's at 5K. If Baker holds the front line, what kind of taunt can he get? What kind of setup is there? The snipe coming through. SKT actually re-engaged on the Baron. And they're going to get rid of the vision. Down to 4,800. Now, in bot lane actually is taking a red buff and pushing. So SKT aren't serious about actually forcing a 5v5 fight, but they have pushed RNG off the barrel. Yeah, they're just trying to delay the members of RNG here. Now, let me spend sent down to the bottom to deal with that minion wave, though, and SK Telecom disengage. First time they've gotten any sort of control over the halfway mark and actually wards into the blue buff area in a long time. So RNG, a bit out of nowhere starting Baron, cost them a lot of map vision. Yep. SKT get inside track on mid -line. They win the exchange, this turret down below us. One third gone already, down to half HP, and who's gonna stop them? Some wave clear from Corky, and it lives at about one quarter health, but that last minute or so was much better executed by the Koreans, by the defending champions. Hoping to reclaim that throne yet again as they're one game away from eliminating Royal Never Give Up here, making it to their fourth final. Most impressive thing to me about SKT this tournament is that they found themselves with the lack of control over games with a gold disadvantage many times over the course of the tournament. And those were the games they actually pulled out and won. They lost to Snowball comps from Misfits twice. They lost to the Fizz Sejuani combo the AHQ was playing. But all those long games where they were in large gold leads, they won because the one thing they have been able to do consistently is set up a line of defense. Understand, if this team makes one move on this part of the map, let's get the maximum advantage somewhere else. They never give up free lunches. That has been the consistent story with SKT. And that's why there, RNG made their first practice move in a while. They said, okay, we've got the item timings. Let's start the Baron. Let's make the fight now while we know we're strong. And SKT respond to it and actually get an advantage from it. Well, SKT never give up free lunches, but Royal never give up is in the name. That was lame, but it's gonna be still the battle for vision over that one. I'm actually disappointed in myself. I, uh. I apologize profusely everywhere. But it is still, it, it's just the tense vision battle. That is what this game is boiled down to at this point. The waves being cleared reasonably well on both sides. Huni not getting crazy inroads into the side. I completely get a break. There's nothing to shout about right now. We're waiting for that Titanic moment. We thought it might have been the teleport play from Zhao Hu, but it was snuffed out even though it was the aggressive use of the Shen. This game is bleeding. It's basically requesting a match winner to show up in a moment. Another Baron start, we might see that big moment. And it feels like SK Telecom are calling RNG's bluff. They're saying, prove it to us now. We are proven champions. And we have the poise in late game. You make the first move. And Black saw it. It was still down there. The taunt's gonna land in a one. The stun there to join as well. They get the ulti out of Galley. Let me will be knocked up there. The chase is still going for Bang. He's got the damage up, but chunks into half and forces the rock jump away. And meanwhile, Nar still pushing in the bot lane. So Hooney was doing in their losses, doing it here as well. He's back in main form, which when it comes to turret damage, is actually a benefit for the Nar. Hoonie taking his toll down there on the bottom side, and the veterans in SK Telecom get a little bit more pressure. Continually able to split the map once again, now starting on the Baron, the team far away. Emelik, she can join this, but the Baron losing health rapidly. He sees, guys, 
Bing's hitting the Baron. There's no control ward on the Baron, so they're not actually able to secure it. They had one in the infantry. They peel away. SKT were not going to finish. And critically, Shahu on the bottom of your screen in the minimap, chasing Huni down, who was closing in his rage bar for a teleport to join the rest of the team. Ooh, but here they go. Away. Cataclysm pops and kicks right back to the rest of the team. MLXG hoping to buy some time. Will get flashed on by Faker. The knockups to follow. Here comes Shen. The knockups to come in. Do they have the damage up? But MLXG trying to run away, getting on the wall, staying alive with a chase in for Peanut. Will find the first kill and break all the silence. And the chase now for Let Me Slowed. And no flash, but getting away, but a dead jungler is all SKT needs. They find the kill on the jungler, and that's all SK Telecom need to flip the switch. Baron started up once again. Loki's still pretty far away, walking in an easy solo on the Drake for Huni. Baron loses more, more himself, they have some health left. You can see a quick blink in, Uzi nearby. Bang, hitting the shots in, down to 4,000. Let me in the front line, here's a TP in for Huni, and a trap gets Uzi too low. Royal never gonna, gonna forfeit the Baron. The spike comes through, and now it might be too late for Shahu. Flashing away, hitting the blue for a bit of move speed, but his health bar is running low, and Faker will shut him down. SKT was so reliable on the defense that RNG got angsty. They thought something had to give. It was SKT that were actually able to pick up the important pick the one time they actually had control over the Baron area. Nerves of steel for SK Telecom, and it pays off with a jungle pick into Baron buff and opening up the RNG base. 35 seconds till Shahu is back. This should be an easy push at the very start. So the question is, what do they go for? Is it inhibitor and more or inhibitor and back? And they look to be positioning a bit forward here, but they will see Smith's point. Take the win that they can get and let the response happen. A lot of Baron buff duration. They have a backup win condition spawning in the Elder Dragon. They picked up three stacks on that as well. No need to get greedy. We're not going to be able to finish the game with Justana alive. SK Telecom so confident in this front line. Able to find the pick there in the critical moment to open up team number five. And let's take another look at MLXG here on the attempted escape. Yeah, he doesn't flash. He doesn't flash, but in previous areas, this would have been fine for him to go for aggressive vision. SKT were not defending the Baron area that aggressively. This time they do, and Peanut just about finishes the kill. That's just so greedy. MLX, she's in front of four people, and he says, I'm in Cataclysm. That's okay, I'll wait it out. And they give away all the control. SK Telecom. Call for RNG to prove that they deserve it, to move past them. But not to yet be proven. Now they're going to have to do it into a Baron buff on a pushing SK Telecom. Open mid lane here has already been destroyed. Super minions will soon be making their way to RNG's base. And a bunch of purple minions will be making their way to the bottom of the base. Yes, they are. And as they continue marching on down, it's a source of gold for RNG, but a source of consternation, knowing that if their base falls, their hopes are over. And we rewind. What were we saying? RNG with the double Infinity Edge carries. They just wanted to team fight. SKT got their advantages without even starting a team fight. A pick was all they needed. Now they roll in with the long range Caitlyn, trying to take a second inhibitor turret. The only thing they wanted to avoid was a fight. And so many times Galio looked to be going aggressively. We knew it was just to allow the Nar to split push. SKT does not want to fight the fight. What's the next play? Out of the bot lane they are. The traps of Caitlyn make re-engaging difficult. Let me block the shot. And the team can continue. Huni walking up. The rest of the team doing the similar. Cannon shoots way at this turret. Say what you want about the nerf DPS of Caitlyn in team fights, but her tower siege is still premier here. Caitlyn traps basically nullify the opportunities for engagement, and the range destroys the turret. With the turret gone, that means there's no engage to be had for RNG to do back off of this one. A nice knockback means there's no ta on Uzi. Look at the next one is Shao, who actually cleanses away with the QSS. The inhibitor is gone, and now there should no longer be a fight that RNG wants. SKT able to get the clean. Second neighbor to take with the Siege. And we also come back to drop. We said MLXG is on the least sin. They do not have true engage on this team. With MLXG's flash down, even when he buffers a Q onto a front line, and you think, oh, is this going to be the insect play? The reliability without the flash is not there. Put down the traps. Have the Galio put up his big W taunt, and then take down objectives. The crowd is roaring. They are cheering for RNG. How are they going to fight a 5v5 fight when SKT has spent 37 minutes denying a 5v5 fight? Well, with two inhibitors down, there's not a lot of 
territory for RNG to work with anymore. They've got so much minion clearing duty ahead of them. Every 30 seconds is going to seem like a lifetime as the double stack super minions will be buffing each other up when mid lane meets bottom lane at the Nexus turrets. It does allow Gold to keep flooding in. Uziana lead currently over Bang on this one, but the siege continues. The overall team goal, of course, much higher for the South Koreans looking for top lane tier two now. Baker able to tank up these shots so easily. Even if the theoretical damage is higher, Baker's real tankiness, just the highest in this game. It's never gonna get access to the Caitlyn. It can't walk up and actually stop the turrets going down. Baker, maybe he's taking damage. It's hard to tell at this point. Yeah, can take three turret shots for just a Lulu shield. And it gets harder from there when you have Locket, Redemption, and everything else. Bang again, putting some shots down. Gets a couple hundred health off of Lefty. Maybe it's it worth just trying to kill Nar quickly, but even that's so difficult right now with Randuin's complete. Turret's falling low. Baker pushed away, but yeah, the shot's still coming in. The turret's tanked up, and this will be turret number eight for SK Telecom T1. They've doubled the score of RNG in that regard. And the SK Telecom War Machine slowly creeps forward. Bang places another line of traps. The super minions are inside of the base, and RNG's options are running out. That's up, Otto's ready, Baker again holding the front line, Ming burns lock it to block it. Nolte, that seems a bit excessive, but wants to be full HP for that one. Let me take a couple of shots as well. And maybe a taunt on the tank here, Let me is gonna be pulled in, the taunt zone, dodge zone gone. And not a lot of damage for this one. Minion wave in mid, signs to be pushed in. Minion wave in bot lane as well. RNG have good wave because they can rotate around and stop the economic victory coming coming through from the minions pushing in. But otherwise, they're just basically watching, hoping for a miracle from this man, from MLXG. He's found out the Warhop sways. There's a lot of couple shots come out from Bang though as well, and Ming's at two thirds health. Red buff goes once again, two in a row, to Bang stolen away from RNG's jungle. And well, there's an Elder Dragon waiting on the side of this wall. It looks like there is no chance for RNG to stop this. They will get mid control for a moment and not much more. A four-stack Elder Dragon going to SKT. He has to respect Baker's fight comes in. Who oh! goes for the Mega Nar. The triple stun! Here's the follow-through! It's gonna be two already! And into the back lane goes Let me cannot kill off Wolf though as the Chinese members are falling left and right. Uzi on the run. Peanut here to follow soon. Jumps forward, finds the dunk to flash away. But it's a 3v5. Can you win this fight and make it down to two? This could be the death now. Uzi trying to kite from Hootie. Oh. It's not going to happen. That's four. That's going to be five. That's the ace. And the legend of SK Telecom will not die today. I've been told they're mortal, but <laughs> they are not going to die today. A 12,000 gold lead. The team fight when they need it. SKT, masters of control, will take down the Nexus. We'll take down RNG and are headed to their fourth World Championship Final. You never profess the death of SKT at Worlds until you see it in front of your eyes. Najin Shield went up 2-1 against them in 2013. Rocks Tigers went up 2-1 last year. This team has been down multiple match points before, ah. but they keep coming back, and Uzi could not be the clutch player in the last game. MLXG made the match about himself, drafting the lease in. No big kick coming through from MLXG, and the SK Telecom T1 juggernaut rolls forward to a fourth world final. It rolls forward, but it was pressured. It, they had to work so heavily for this. Two best of fives. SK Telecom have been pushed to the brink. Yes, they have made it, but man, it's been close. Down two and one, and both times they pull back the last two games they needed. SKT, as you said, time and again, but it's worth for repeating and mentioning you don't see dynasties this good in esports or any sports four world finals in five years could be four titles in five years as well the team so happy peanut came in and was the clutch member needed so often we've talked about the substitute jungle situation with this team you know banky and blank now blank and peanut and yet as one as one of them gets subbed out the other one always comes in to save the day Peanut smile, definitely. Bit of a ray of sunshine after all his depression. Just a coach Rapid Star on the screen again. And to your point, Freak, we use very flowery terms when we talk about SKT's dominance. Odyssey, 
other Greek mythology the era, words. The era of, the chapter of. The chapter is still being written. We are still seeing it. There was a chance for it to be closed today, and maybe a new one spring eternal next year. But the chapter and the resilience of this team, for Peanut to come in and be as good as he was, dictated two in game four, strong in game five, Suddenly, they've got another selection headache on their hands, but it's not which jungler is less bad. It's which weapon do they want to unleash 